WeatherTech Sports Car Championship on IMSA Radio. Hello there, everybody, and welcome along to Long Beach. It's a beautiful afternoon. Good to have you with us in sound and vision. We're on the left hand coast. The west coast is the best coast, is what everyone says around here. 11 corners and uh, just, well, a little bit of everything really in this 1.968 mile circuit uh, with its long run down shoreline drive uh, round through the uh, Aquarium Way and the and the fountain and everybody trying to find the best bits of One hour and 40 minutes on the clock as we get ready to go green on the streets of Long Beach. Jeremy Shaw and me, John Hindhoff, with the race call. The lights are out on the Acura MDX safety car. 18 degrees in the air, 14 43 degrees on the track. That's 105 on track and 64 in the air. Jeremy Shaw, as ever, we are ready for action 
here on the streets of Long Beach and we expect it to be hot, heavy and plenty of fast and furious excitement. So getting ready to go green, they'll form up this time around on Seaside. And the Acura safety car ready to pull off. Down through the final corner, turn number 11. And the GTP field, the top eight, come together and then head for the hills as they hit the ball. Oh, huge incident earlier on, and the Cadillacs in the wall down in turn one, also the number 60 Acura. But that was a very bizarre incident for Sebastian Porte. The 01 gold front of Cadillac has gone around and now the Acura has had to avoid it down in turn one. I think this could be a safety car before we've even got going. As Billy Albuquerque leads the motor race with the number six of Nick Tandy coming through the carnage into second place in the Penske run Porsche, Porsche Penske Motorsport number six in second, the 25 BMW, Nick Yellowly in third position. Now through the final corners. And it is a full course yellow. Set it on the tires. Set it on the tires. I have the nose. I have the nose. Come on. You want to drive this tiny gate out of the way? You want to drive this tiny gate out of the way? So this is going to be the EMR safety teams into action straight away. Now, jump or pushed for the 01 Cadillac. Throws it down the inside and loses it on the brakes. Now, this is something we've been talking about. And Sebastian Bourdais, with the brake by wire system only happening on the back wheels over the bump, completely loses it. And that is extraordinary for the zero one one car. And I think the Tom Blomqvist number 60 Acura just going off in sympathy. I don't think there was a touch there. No, there wasn't. He had nowhere to turn in, in fact, Tom Blomqvist. And actually did a really good job of avoiding the spinning car. That could have been even worse than it was. Jeremy Shaw. See if we can get uh, Jeremy's comment on that, Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. Well, for the moment at least, uh, we can't uh, have a chat with Jeremy. So under full course yellow. Start is under review and that's standard procedure here. So 
So Philip Albuquerque leading as we're under a safety car. Always an issue here on the streets. Debris flags out into the fountain as well. Marco Sorensen leads for GT. I think we'd call that an untidy start, Jeremy, wouldn't we? Uh, that was uh, most unfortunate. Certainly, uh, Tom Blunkers did nothing wrong there. He was minding his own business going into the corner. He would have been distracted, first of all, by that spin from Bourdais. I mean, and look, last year, Bourdais was on pole position. He robbed away in the first start. Then he made a mistake at the hairpin. They had to pass everybody else. But this time, he's going to have to do it. To not even, didn't even get to the first corner before he was going backwards. So, yeah, a very, very messy start. So Albuquerque from Tandy, from Nick Yellowly from BMW, well, Christopher Farf is up in the fourth, Philippe Naza in fifth, Alexander Sims in sixth, and that is the GTP field with uh, some walking wounded. So Eel Racing and Racers Edge not even making the start, Sebastian Bourdais in problems. However, Oh, we are doing a GTP class split. Uh, so that means that Longfist at least will fire his way past all of the cars in the GT field and give himself an opportunity to get on the back of the field. So on then there were 25. And Tom Blockfist just put the fastest lap in as he did the pass around last time. <laughs> Such a thing. Vagaries, Jeremy, of uh, put that down on your, <laughs> on your lap chart there. Blockfist has the fastest lap by doing the pass around. Yeah, that was a uh, very embarrassing start to the race, wasn't it? All, all around, and uh, let's have another look at it here. Uh, a good clean start there from uh, Philip Albuquerque, who could do just a fa fantastic job in qualifying. These accuracies are really well suited to this track now. The uh, accurate engineers did a fabulous job over the winter to prepare these GTP cars, but Bourdais there, just uh, that was way too optimistic. Look where everybody else is braking, and then look where Sebastian Bourdais braked. Uh, that didn't work out too well, did it? And of course, he hasn't even got that car going yet, uh, again yet, I don't think. So he's already now lost uh, three laps to the field. That's an odd one, isn't it? Uh, in the braking area for Turn 1, the gold-fronted Cadillac snaps to the left-hand side and clips the wall on drivers on driver's left. And we've been talking, haven't we, Jeremy, about the complexity of these GTP machines. One of the issues that all of the manufacturers have talked about is trying to understand and to integrate some spec drive line, uh, particularly the the hybrid systems and the brake by wire systems, with propriety uh, propriety software. They're all allowed to have their own software. And some of them clearly have got the ones and zeros better than the others. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, there is a lot of technology on these cars. They are very, very complicated. Um, and uh, and it has certainly made driving them even more of a challenge for the uh, for these guys. So, uh, you know, mistakes are going to happen. But uh, that was a, uh, a fairly basic one there from Sebastian Bourdais. You certainly wouldn't expect him to make that sort of a mistake on the opening lap. And clearly he breaks probably 50 yards at if not more than that later than anybody else. Well, these other guys are pretty darn good as well. So to break it that much later than anybody else, I think something's not, not quite right. Uh, and, and as you said, uh, it, these tyres take a long time to get up to full operating temperatures and pressures. So you cannot push nearly as hard at the beginning as you would be able to once you've got that heat and uh, pressure into the tyres. So you yeah, just called out more day there. Unfortunately, it's put... Uh, Tom Brook is he, he's a lap down isn't he he's a lap down to the field before he was able to get going again I think at least that's what you're showing on the scoring um, so uh, 
So, you know, it's going to be awfully difficult to make up a lap here. It's it's conceivably possible, but very, very unlikely, I think, given the, the short nature of this race. In fact, it's only going to be most likely one pit stop for the GTP cars. So the sad situation is that the single Chip Ganassi Cadillac bullet in the gun is out of the race before we've even really got underway. So the Cadillac flag being flown by Whelan Engineering and Alex Sims and Pete Durani sitting at the moment in sixth position in the red and white fronted car. The rest of the team out in Portugal, Portimao this weekend and the head of Chevy racing out there as well. Laura Wontrop Clauser. Hello Laura, I know you'll be tuned into this. Not the start, the start that she wanted before round two of FIA tomorrow. Back tomorrow, we're back under green. And it's Philippe Albuquerque down to turn one. Newly repainted bright red orange line and pit exit there that the drivers have been told to stay away from. Down through the fountain and into turn five. IMSA drivers able to negotiate the curbs there. One or two of the IndyCar drivers couldn't do that earlier on in qualifying and practice. Now across three different surfaces into turn number eight and on the seaside. Real opportunity here for BMW and Nick Yellowly. Jeremy, and he's already hustling the back of Nick Tandy, who frankly had the best of the starts with all of that carnage going on around him. He picked his way through that and finds himself in second, but Yellowly beginning to hassle him now from behind. And Yellowly doing a really good job this weekend. His first time here at Long Beach, of course. Uh, both he uh, and the other two newcomers in that team, Philip Eng and I, are just so far from love. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they've, they've all raced on street circuits in the past, but uh, they are absolutely loving this opportunity here. They love the race track, it's got a bit of flow to it from their perspective. And those BMWs are fast as we can, it's really good to see. But here's a pit stop for what was the championship leading coming into the weekend. That's number 31 Action Express, a wheel and engineering Cadillac. But after qualifying uh, with the pole position, the number 10 car now leads the points at this stage. Uh, now, the Minimum drive time in the Pro Classes is only five minutes, so we'll see a driver change here, I think, for Whelan Engineering. And so Alex Sims will get out, and people Durrani will get in and do the rest of the hour and 27 minutes. Now, they might be able to make this work. They'll only need one more pit stop from here. I did not see, well, this is taking a while, but they didn't put any new tyres on that car. Only two sets of Michelin tyres for qualifying and the race, Jeremy. They've rolled the dice early. Whatever they think, about, almost cut the end of the pit lane, but they've stayed on the lead lap barely. They're rolling the dice now strategically. Yeah. Um sure about this one, I must admit, because everybody's going to make one pit stop. I mean, the other leaders are only really going to make one pit stop as well. Um, so I'm not quite sure how this is going to work in their favour. Um, unless there's another full course caution now. And even then, I don't see, I don't see how it really works in their favour. But um, those guys know a lot smarter than me, I guess. Uh, but he had, you know, he had saved on a little lap of these So that's the good news. Uh, and uh, if there's another course be able to catch up but uh, you know they're still a set they're still gonna have to make one more pit stop from here to the end of the race i suppose the only thing they can think is that they're balancing out there um well, i know that was gonna say balancing out their tire wear but they didn't change tires there they've got one more set of barely used michelin slick tires which they had uh, from earlier on in the weekend um, i don't know let's 
Let's uh, put that to once. On that one. Yes, exactly. I've, I've, I've sort of written some notes here, and the, the, the note is, I don't know. Uh, in terms of GTD, it is Jack Hawks that leads for Vassar Sullivan. He's the best of pro cars with Marco Sorensen, Art of Racing Team in second place. No difference in the performance potential of those cars. They are up at the same BOP. They're going down towards turn one now, and it's the, the Bumblebee coloured yellow and black Lexus that leads it. Pushing their way through the number one Madison Stowe Paul Miller Racing Team. They're in that suppose one two three four five sixth position but second in gtd and that uh, red white and black number one car then hunting down cars ahead meantime in gtp at the moment people to rani who's just taken over the wheel and engineering cadillac has got Tom Blomfist right up his tailpipes. Now this is interesting, Jeremy, because Pete Motorani is a pit stop in hand on Blomfist here, and not long out of the pits with tyres that they didn't change because um, they've only got one more set, and they'll want to do that before the end of the race, but no tyre warmers here, so they've taken that tactical gamble they're battling all the way at the back of the GTD field. Yeah, so, I'm sorry there, I was, I was distracted, but, t so number 31 car has been lapped then, has it, by the leader, I'm sorry, I missed that, I, yeah. Um, but so the number 60 guy is still lapped down in any case, so, oh, it's this number 60 guy is pressing the Porsche, it's number 6 Porsche that number 60 car is behind, but as you say, number 60 car it is uh, a, a, a lap down. Car, uh, number six guy is a lap down he's on a GTP car so he's got to get past all of them this, this train in front of Felipe Nasser yes indeed that is the uh, Porsche sorry my apologies Jeremy I threw you a curveball there not the number uh, 31 which is at the back of the field after it's stopped and remains on the lead lap where Tom Blomqvist as he goes through uh, is behind the Porsche but a lap down on the leaders. Very, very important that he tries to stay there and improve his position. So a new fastest lap there. The second place car, Nick Tandy, as the Porsche car number six, who is uh, chasing after Philip Albuquerque for the lead on this race. Nick Yellowly, he set the fastest lap a couple of laps to go, so all three cars here seem to be very, very competitive. So we're at lap 10, completed by the leaders, and this battle between Felipe Nasser and uh, Tom Blunkus, even though it really is particularly relevant because uh, Blunkus is shown a, a lap down to everybody else, but he's pushing hard. He wants to get past that first car in his uh, in his comeback trail if, if it's possible it's Jeremy Shaw I'm John Hindorf you're live in sound and vision as we have 18 minutes on the clock and that means an hour and 22 to go on the sunny streets of Long Beach 43 Celsius on the track 18 in the air or 109 Fahrenheit and 64 uh, if you prefer as we are working the 12th lap usual battles down in GT with Hawksworth leading from Marcus Sorensen then the second place GTD Pro a parry failure I'm, I'm, I think it's it's pointless to be fair to try and break up these cars at the moment. Let's just talk, Jeremy, about the GT category and sort out the pros and arms when we get to the podium positions at the end of the race in an hour and 21 minutes time. Leader coming through some of those battles.
for the Alvin Kirk who's working his way through. Now with a second or so ahead of Nick Tandy. Hello to Josh Barrett, listening to us from his hotel near Croft. So you can never have enough motorsport in a day, he says. He's absolutely right. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us. Hello to Alexa. And to Mikey D. All listening in to IMSA Radio and IMSA TV at the moment. Settling down into some rhythm right now after a somewhat bitty race at start with that incident for Sebastian Bourdais and Cadillac. This is a race that Jim Ganassi will want to forget. Nick Tandy carving his way past well, the GT port, GTD Porsches as the leader goes past the gradient NSX. And there's been a lot of traffic for them to go through. And this is really important for people to Rani. He's just ahead of the leader at the moment and people will do everything he's car he can, Jeremy in that uh, number 31 wheel and Cadillac to try and stay ahead of the black and blue leader. He does not want to go a lap down here having made a first pit stop. No, that's exactly right, sir. Uh, and that would be uh, the, the death knell to any hopes of winning this race for the car that came in to, here to California as a points leader. So he will definitely want to try and stay ahead of it. But because of Arbiter, he will try desperately to put that number 31 car a lap down because that is, those aren't uh, it came in here in the order 31 and 10, but after qualifying in that old position and a 35 points uh, gained the private number 10 car, that now leads to points coming. Is there any way out of the to make that move and get past the number 31 car? He will go, no doubt about it. The Durani car, never So now it's down to. Philippe Albuquerque to make those decisions and try and pick his way through the traffic. He goes by the Lamborghini of uh, Misha Goikberg, Fort Air Racing. He's up to fifth position and carving his way forward. And this is going to be the story of the race, our Porsche keys to the race. It's a sprint, but it's a sprint that's peppered with traffic from other classes. Make sure you are flexible in your pit strategy. Small mistakes with big consequences. Tell that to Sebastian Bourdais. He'll know that one as well. Here's our first PP Racing in race update. Albuquerque then by 3.2 seconds. Last time across the line to Nick Tandy with Nick Yellowly. Eight tenths of a second further back in the first of BMWs. His teammates into the Second further back in the number 24, Augusto Farfas in the top six made up by Felipe Nasa and the best of the GTD pros after the problems and the pit stops for the other GTPs. In GTD, it's Marcus Sorensen that leads for Heart of Racing Team ahead of Madison Snow, Frankie Monte Calvo and Mike Skeen in Port Miller Racing's BMW, Vassar Sullivan's Lexus and the Mercedes of Team Corner. That's how they stand, with still an hour and 16 minutes to go. And you get the feeling, Jeremy, there's still plenty of action to come, plenty of stories to be written here. Yeah, no, no, about, no doubt about that. Just uh, 15 laps uh, into the race, 24 minutes, so, so an hour and 16 remaining. These cars can do, I reckon, about maybe 55 minutes around here, at the very most, the GTP cars, which what more, of course, than they were able to do last year. It's around about 35, 40 minutes or... 40, 40 to 45, I guess it, it was, because under a minute race and with a bit of yellow and a bit of. Uh, 
effective cost, uh, fuel saving driving, it could do it on one stop, but it's marginal. Uh, but still, uh, there's, a, there's a, a fair while to go yet before that car would have needed to make a pit, anybody else will need to make a pit stop. I just can't believe that there wasn't um, something amiss with that number 31 car to make, make them pit that early. I, I didn't see them change any tyres, Jeremy. It doesn't mean that they didn't. Um, but um, not even as if they had maybe a, a puncture somewhere and that they decided to bring Alexander Sims in. A very short amount of work for him on the streets of, of Long Beach. I agree with you. I, I can't see that being a strategic call. Alexander has been super quick and in fact was chosen to qualify because of how quick he's been and topped the times in one of the sessions, I think FP2, wasn't it? He was right up there at least. I, I'm, I'm not sure how that's working and, I, I, and I've, I've still got the big question mark here on the sheet next to me here in the global broadcast booth. And I, I, they have to stay on the lead lap and then see how it works out. And they're kind of, they're kind of already in that number 31 car, which is just a heart of racing Aston Martin away from the leader. They're kind of hoping for a, a, another safety car or another yellow flag situation. Uh, absolutely. There, yes. Uh, and, um, you know, it was a, a good lap turned last time around by Philip Albuquerque, the race leader, and we're only 12.8. The fastest lap of the race, that he did on lap, so lap 11 of this race. That was the fastest lap of the race so far, 112.395. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's certainly turning some very, very good laps now. Uh, and he, yeah, as they could leave, the, the leading car got its way through that traffic of the uh, GC D cars. Uh, the Piva Durani in that third one failed to make a bit of a break, so he's pulled away a bit now, and that is certainly good news for him. The last lap around for that number 31. It's back up into sixth place, by the way, because all of the GTD cars have now been lapped. That uh, was a, a 13.9 last time around for. Oh! Whoops. Karen Barrage at uh, turn number 11. And who's in there? Inception. We've got the Vault Porsche, the WeatherTech AMG, the 66. JG went with NSX. Now getting underway. And more. <laughs> well, you know, one driver's meat is another one's poison, but that's a huge, huge problem for Sheena Monk. She was really hell up there, and Jerome Blakemolen's gone past. Uh, at least a couple of cars there in the Kelly Moss with Riley machine, the dark coloured Porsche. That all started with the number 72. That's the. 78. Uh, excuse me, 78. No, oh. actually, it wasn't. It was Brendan Areeb getting hit from behind by the turn of BMW, the Macintosh car. And that's going to be a penalty for that machine. And then everyone else had nowhere to go, including the team car, the 96, who just about squeezed through. It's a turn 11, the right-handed hairpin, super, super tight there. And the Liquid Molly car just about gets through. The 77 Alan Brynjolfsson car can't make it. Just didn't have enough lock to clear it. Feel sorry as well for the number 79, Daniel Junkadella, who didn't know whether to stick or twist there, Jeremy, and go left or right, and everybody ends up in neutral, waiting to try and go through. But I think it's Pat Gallagher in the 96 turn at BMW uh, that got through. So it'll be Chandler Hull who caused all that in the 97, the blue and black Macintosh sponsored car. Yeah, indeed, and that certainly has split up that um, latter part of the field there from Danny Yukadela. That's cost him a lot of ground to, to the other four cars. Right. Quick lap return at the front of the field. I mean, worked their way through all that GCD traffic. The fastest lap of race last time around. Uh, in the car number 10, 
six on this last lap though, and Yellowly went to, well, almost as quick, well, 11.908. Yeah, nobody's looking really good, isn't it, in the third position. But as they went their way to the back track, the cup went to the extent of the three up to three and a half seconds. Uh, hello to Patrick, who is out racing Storky, watching and listening in Germany, where it's coming up to midnight in 20 minutes' time. Thank you for being with us this late on. Uh, what, just after half past two in the afternoon on the streets of Long Beach at IMSA Radio. If you want to get in touch with us, good to have you company wherever you are on a very busy weekend already today. We've had coverage from Portimao and the FIA WEC, a brilliant four-hour race on the Nürburgring Nordschleife from one of your Team USA guys, Neil Verheigen, doing really well there, Jeremy with the BMW Junior team and problems for the number 60. That's the Acura back up to speed, but having lost a bit of time there, uh, having already had its problems earlier on in the race, but that was another problem coming out the final corner. As I said, Neil Verhagen uh, with the BMW Junior team pulling off a victory and in the uh, Nürburgring Langstrecker series, third round, He's looking very good with his teammates out there. Congratulations to another Team USA victory. Yeah, good for him. He's, he's a his real star, is uh, Neil. And uh, got that fabulous opportunity with that BMW Junior team. I hope we, hopefully we'll see, him, see that team over here. Look here, back at Long Beach, number 31 car. Held him a little bit there by Alfred Johnson. The GCD car going into the hairpin. And now the Abaco is right behind engineering Cadillac and trying to put a lap down to the head along school line drive. I, for a moment I thought the number 60 had pitted but he didn't come out of pit leg. See where he comes back out again and where he is on the track. Remember he was trying to uh, stay in behind Nick Tandy in uh, second position but he's dropped we're back from that now, after that issue at the first corner. Leader, just a WeatherTech AMG. No, no, he's, he's dropped way back from that battle for second now, and it's the BMW with the Porsche who are battling for second. It's the leader now on shoreline, excuse me, on seaside, heading towards turn nine. Has people Durrani in his sight? Now, you might ask yourself, well, Philippe Albuquerque is pretty much two miles ahead of that wheel and engineering Cadillac. Why is he going to try super hard to pass a car that is right on the end of the lead lap? Because that is a car, Jeremy, that is a contender for the lead if a safety car comes right out now. We know how quick that Cadillac is. We know how quick Pete Monterrani is. And the Acura, driven by... Philippe Albuquerque will want to try and get through. Well, he'll be doing everything he can to get through, but uh, good luck there for Pipa Durrani, able to keep him at bay. One minute 12.5 last time around for Durrani in number 31 car. His best so far is a 12, one minute 12.1. And uh, for Tom Lucas, yeah, he's still going again, isn't he? Uh, in fact, he's just his, his best lap of the race. Uh, on that last time around as well. Yeah, and... That battle for second and third is, is heating up again, isn't it? It only looks really good in that number 25 BMW. Now, target acquired for Albuquerque coming through to the end of the lap, 9, 10 and 11, with 66 and a half minutes still to go. Driver just being led away. There, down at turn one. I presume uh, that must have been Sebastian Bourdain. That was a bad one. Back in, uh, in GTD. Wow. Yeah, and that is the BMW that not caught. Even the, not even the middle of the pack, is it? That's. Uh, yeah, that is the number 97, and there will be a drive-through for that uh, car. We thought that the Macintosh BMW, the Turner BMW, would get a 
penalty for that, and Chandler Hull has been assessed uh, with that penalty. It looks like he has been through the pit lane and taken that, so he's dropped back to the back of GTD. Yeah, and I think that's him, is it not? Right behind, uh, right ahead of the leaders in GTD Pro. Exactly and, so, well, Jeremy. And GTD with Sorensen in there as well. Exactly so, Jeremy. Yeah. So that is a bit of a, an unreal situation for Chandler Hull. Has not been racing on the streets before here at Long Beach. And now he's got the leaders bearing down and he's trying to stay on the lead lap in GT. And Jack Hawksworth, all he wants to do is get by at the moment. Now the performance potential is exactly the same between these cars, Chandler Hull and Jack Hawksworth are the defining items in how quick car those cars can go. And Jack Hawksworth has the GTD leader, Marco Sorensen, then Patrick Pelier for Faf Motorsport in the Plaid Porsche. Problem? Oh, yes, there's a little bit of damage on the front of the WeatherTech number 79 as it comes into the pit lane for Daniel Yunkatella. In fairness, he's not been. Uh, really right in there and peeling off is the leader from GTD with an hour and four minutes left to go it's 35 minutes and 65 minutes so this is right there in terms of the drive time Jeremy for GTD correct so they, they reckon now they can get to the end from here uh, be, be the first one to make a pit stop and get out again it's another quarter play in their favour and the the, the, the open coming before your rival or after them is certainly less of a factor in GTD than it is excuse me in GTD as it is in GTP where the GTP drivers have a lot more difficulty getting their cars really after their best opportunity. Here comes uh, Frankie Monte Calvo who's running in the uh, third position non-pro class, he was behind Madison Snow, uh, they qualified the other way around, uh, but uh, Madison Snow was ahead of Frankie Montecava, also in the pits there is Mike Ski, who's running in the fourth position. At IMSA Radio, if you'd like to get in touch with us, pit stop so important here, our Portuguese to the race, get your strategy, you might have to little be a little bit flexible, but really in a 100 minute race, You've got to know the options. Out comes the Lexus. Oh, cuts right across the newly repainted line this weekend. Now, there is a sensor on that line. Few of the IndyCar drivers have been caught out by that as well this weekend. Already, 23 car in the pit lane is Ross Gunn from fourth in GTD Pro for Aston Martin and Harter Racing. You cannot cut the pit exit line in the same way as you cannot come in the pit exit if you are coming into turn one, Jeremy, and that was borderline by the Lexus as it rejoined the, the uh, race surface as it came out after its pit lane. Yeah, that's um, a no-no. <laughs> uh, so that will be a penalty. There's a pit stop then for Madison Snow handing over that car to Brian Sellers. That's Paul Miller racing BMW that won last year's uh, Sprint Cup Championship for GTD, which this is the first round this year. Um, that's somebody just going straight on into turn one. That's another driver cutting the edge of the pit exit line trying to hold a position as well. This is the BMW and the Aston as they go through turn four into turn five. Number one, Paul Miller Racing BMW, the Total Quartz, quartz Machine and the Heart of Racing 27 of Roman De Angelis trying to get around, flashing the lights. So Brian Sellers unwilling and reasonably so because this is a battle for position. This is not blue flag situation in terms of give way to a faster car who is in the lead. And Brian Sellers trying to stay ahead. I didn't see any tyre change there for 
the BMW, and it may be that some of these GT cars try to do the 100 minutes on one set. And a problem for the Liquid Molly. 96 BMW, left rear, I think, is rubbing. Yes, it is. Now, has he clipped the wall there? Or has there been some kind of other incident? It still appears to have some air in it, that Michelin tyre, as he comes down seaside way, down towards turn number nine. But that's drama for one of the teams who we always put in the mix, Jeremy, for the front of the field being Turner Motorsport. Yeah, very much so. Uh, so that would be a, a, a disaster for, for, for that team, Robbie Foley. Uh, has, uh, as you say, just taken over the wheel of that car, so it's the outlap for that machine. So that battle continues on. Just waiting to see where the 96 car comes back. Has it got to the pit lane? That is the key thing. I can't believe it's going to continue, but it appears that that is exactly what is happening. So maybe that's just a bodywork rub from a, a brush on the wall or something like that. As Philippe Albuquerque by eight tenths of a second from Nick Tandy in second, then the two BMWs, Nick Yellowly and Augusta Farfas, 10, 6, 25 and 24, your leaders in GT, it's uh, Parry Pele coming out of second place for Bath Motorsport to make their pit stop. Hawks with leads from now Jordan Taylor from Corvette in second and leading in GTD. And that's why Brian Sellers was fighting so hard, Jeremy, because he knew the other cars was going to pit in front of him and saw that battle with the BMW and the heart of racing Aston Martin was for the lead of GTD. Uh, if you look at this battle for the lead now all of a sudden, uh, there's four cars there in that train. Number 31 car is still on the lead lap. The next car behind him uh, as, they, uh, as they head now to turn uh, eight and go on to Seaside Way is the race lead of the blue and black car of Philip Albuquerque, which led from the pole position right behind him there. Now, all of a sudden, having close up of, of a gap that was more than three and a half seconds not too long ago, is Nick Tandy in that lead Porsche car number six and Nick Yellowly right there as well in the BMW. So we've got all four manufacturers there in a train coming off the hairpin and into the pits comes the number 10 car. That's awfully early. 57 and three quarter minutes as he came into the pit lane still to go for the Conning and Minolta Acura. Now, are they seeing something round the circuit? Do they expect a safety car or is this planned? Remember our Porsche keys to the race, small mistakes have a big consequences. Uh, two cars didn't even start the race this weekend, the AO Racing Porsche and the Racers Edge Acura after practice and qualifying incidents. Get your strategy right in the pits. Now, is this going to be right for the Conning and Minolta? It's a very long, slow entry to the pit lane here, and it will be a full set of Michelin tyres, and I reckon they're not even scrubbed as Albuquerque gets out and Ricky Taylor gets in. Also in the pit lane, Jack Hawksworth, the leader of GTD Pro, as Klaus Backler has been in and, or at least the FAF Motorsport Porsche has been in and Klaus Backler has bought it out. This is his first time on the streets of Long Beach. Hard to believe that, but he's not done a full season of IMSA before. All of his previous IMSA seasons have just been at Daytona. Uh, so Sebring was a first, here is a first, and uh, yeah, well, you get the kind of thing. Here comes the wheel and engineering yes. Cadillac going yep. through, and that's just about a full lap, Jeremy, that yep. that car has lost by being in the pits for for uh, uh, the Wayne Taylor with uh, Andretti Racing, cutting him an Alton car, and look yeah. how little grip they've exactly. got on, on cold new tyres. Yeah, I spoke to Tell me how difficult it is on fresh tyres here. It's really difficult. Here comes uh, one of the Porsches, that's the number six car, out of uh, well, out of the lead. So that will hand the lead to the BMW, Nick Yellowly. But he's, he, he 
you say how difficult it is to get these tyres up to temperature, and we're seeing it at the uh, just why right now it's really struggling. Oh, it's a long stop for the Porsche number six, and it's not moving in the pit lane. Drama here then. Now it goes. They were waiting for the energy coefficient to be fulfilled, I think. I can't tell you whether that's the case because we don't get that information. The pit stop time is governed by the liquid fuel fill and the virtual amount of energy that's being used in the stint. And as yet, although we're asking for it, IMS are not providing us with that information. And so it appeared that nothing was going on at the end of that pit stop. Yeah. But uh, that is a, a balance on the energy side of things between yeah. the hybrid power and the electrical energy, Jeremy, and the liquid fuel that goes into the car. That's, uh, it, that's exactly uh, exactly right, John. As you see, the number 25 car comes into the pits now, so that puts uh, Augusto far from the BMW car number 24. The, uh, the, the, the stint energy, the, the amount of total energy, as you were just explaining, that the cars are allowed to, to use during an entire stint, is part of the balance that can be tweaked. It has been tweaked for here at Long Beach compared to uh, where we were at Sebring last time out. As you see, uh, Albuquerque is struggling to stay ahead of these, uh, this train of cars behind me. Ricky Taylor Tom now in that car, Jeremy. Excuse me, yeah, Ricky Taylor, of course. Uh, including, of course, now uh, Tom Blomquist, who's given himself into the picture. As you see, the, the Porsche of Felipe Nasser. Uh, excuse me, that wasn't... Uh, Let me it. Yeah, Bichamini coming into the pits. Oh, no, 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 you're right. Sorry, you're right. It was Nasser. My apologies, Jeremy. It was the number seven car that came into the pits. Although I have to say, it looked like the, the white stripes on that car that, that came in. I think this is a smart move by Penske uh, and Porsche. Penske, Porsche Motorsport together here this weekend and at Portimao because at the moment, that number 10 of Ricky Taylor just hanging on the lead lap is slowing up the cars behind it. And, and this might be an opportunity for a little bit of a change around as NASA is out of the number seven car. And that means Math, uh, Matty Campbell, the Australian, gets in to that machine. Still fuel going into that Porsche Penske Motorsport 963. Now, side by side on the front straight, the 31 wheel and Cadillac. Still down the order, of course. And getting position on track back from one of the BMWs. So that was important for them. And Jamini, I think, got out in front of the team car there. Uh, excuse me, Campbell, I think, got out of the team car there. Wait to see those two cars again, the two Porsches on the far side of the circuit as Farfus comes in the pits from the lead from BMW with 47, call it 48 minutes to go, Jeremy. It's all changed at the front of the field. Well, it really has. I mean, Colin Di Filippi now, he's taken over in the number 25 BMW, as you see, number 24 car on the pit lane, the last of the uh, of the cars to pit, apart from Tom Blomqvist in number 60. Uh, but uh, by staying out the number 25 car, by staying out a couple of laps longer than the number 10, he's not only leapfrogged the number 10, he was eight seconds ahead of it uh, on the last line time around. So we talked about it earlier on to gamble to make your stop early. If there's a caution period before the other guys come in, great. If there isn't, and that was has been the case here, it doesn't seem to have worked out in his favour at the moment because Conley Felipe now has the track position over Ricky Taylor. Here comes the BMW out of the pit lane. It's a very long run on the pit lane, which is to drive us right down towards the turn in for turn one. That's deliberate by the organisers and the series here because you don't want them rejoining onto the racing line. Now, very important. So Pipo Durrani, who was right on the tail end of the lead lap, braking for turn number eight, weaving around a bit in the braking area as well, people, there. 
uh, no, excuse me, Pete Moore's behind Matt Campbell who's moving around because he's defending and he's trying to go around the outside, Pete Moore, at turn number nine. Yeah, but Pete Moore still has to make another pit stop, don't forget. Oh, yes. Uh, so, you know, the, the other guys don't. Uh, so, you know, he's got, he's got an awful lot to make up here. It's very strange that we make that stop so early in the race. And there had uh, to be something wrong, Jeremy. Yes, there. exactly right. Absolutely right. No the, question about it. But uh, it's fascinating to see number 25 car. What a great effort that was uh, by Conor Di Filippi. But uh, the, uh, both Porsches uh, are ahead of both of them, I think, now, aren't they? Having made their stops. Chamonix late. Campbell Indeed. second. People Durrani yeah. third. Yeah, Conor Di Filippi first. With that pit stop, yes. Yeah. So Porsche, 963 from Porsche Penske Motorsport. A first and second, then the Cadillac of people to Rani a wing or some pit stop before the end of the race, unless there's a huge amount of yellow flag and it goes down the inside. That's a really decisive manoeuvre into turn number six. He turns left onto Pine. Wow! Durrani knows he's got to get on with this. If he's got any chance at all, he's got to pass two Porsches and make up some ground. Now, his tyres potentially a little bit warmer and in a better, little bit better condition. He's also burning some VP racing fuel at the moment, but he is some four and a half seconds behind the leader as he comes out the final corner on the front straight. But he's in the mood, and when Pete is in this mood, Jeremy, anything can happen. Uh, yeah, it can. Uh, he's certainly going to need a full course caution for anything uh, really amazing to happen because uh, with another pit stop, he's going to fall way, way behind all these other contenders. But, um, you yeah, know, as you say, he's capable. Uh, I spoke to him yesterday morning, and uh, he was telling me you know, how lucky they were at Seabing. Uh, yes, they were a bit lucky at the end, certainly, but they were fast all the week, all the weekend long. And then with that incident towards the end, uh, despite having, they, they held the advantage, didn't they, after what should have been the final round of pit stops at Seabing, going to the final race, but uh, slipped back at that final restart and then were perfectly positioned when the three cars ahead and tangled up together. So they went on to win the race uh, and uh, therefore uh, that would say to lead the championship as well. So uh, anything is possible for the running. Absolutely. Two Acuras uh, running together on the track, although uh, they are sitting in fifth and sixth position yeah. now. But certainly, you know, the, the big lose from that whole thing was number 10 car. I mean, came in, in into the pits in the lead. Uh, it had held a pretty a substantial lead at one stage up to over three and a half seconds. That had diminished to uh, just a couple of car lengths before it made it hit this pit stop. But uh, as Ricky was telling me this morning, uh, there's a danger of, of the overcut. Uh, the tire cars that up on their first dent and, and have hot tyres that are still grippy and still working well and that has been the case for that car. At IMSA Radio if you'd like to get in touch with us thank you to those of you who in Europe at nearly midnight on a Saturday evening are tuned in in the UK uh, on Fireplay uh, with uh, Extra Channel on the Sky platform that's one of their free to air channels a uh, lying in bed says Ez, uh, we'll forgive you that at nearly 11 o'clock at night. In certainly the way to spend a Saturday night in the UK. Uh, hello to Alan Crosser, who has customers in the pub watching because I've got time to watch it myself, says Alan Crosser, king of the screen grab normally. Sarah Rigby is in crew in the northwest of the UK. And hello to Alan Space as well, says if the full course yellow comes out after the point where GTP is to make it there, wouldn't it? Uh, would the 31 have less fuel to put on board and may leapfrog the field or at least a few positions if they stay on the lead lap? Now that everybody's made their pit stops, one pit stop there, Alan, they all need the same amount of fuel to go to the end. Um, yeah. it, will, it will be about the energy usage and because they've been out longer, they are likely to have to stand still longer. So it actually won't benefit them at all. And remember the Acura have been given a slightly quicker energy replenishment for this race. So they will perhaps benefit from, uh, from that situation. 
Yeah, nothing substantial though. No. And yeah, all, all the eight car, all the seven cars, excuse me, number, number uh, one car is gone, hasn't it? Zero one car is gone from the, on that first corner. The other seven DGP cars are all within 17 seconds at the moment. Of course, number 31 car does seconds at the moment overall and closing rapidly on Matthew Jaminet, but Jaminet won't worry about that at all. No, no. Uh, and the number 60 car in sixth position at the moment, still stuck behind Ricky Taylor, uh, still needs to, needs to make a bit stop. He hasn't made any stops yet from number 60, uh, Maya Shank Racing Acura. We've gone over the half distance mark, 55 minutes down, 45 to go. And here's our VP Racing in race update. Jamin here by a second ish uh, from the 31 of Pete Durrani. So that's the number six Porsche, the one with the white uh, pinstripes and white front end on that car. From Pete Durrani, that's the Cadillac, the wheel and engineering Action Express run car sitting in second. They're on seaside, heading towards the turn nine at the moment. Then six seconds further back, the second of the Porsche Penske Motorsports, the number seven car, Matt Campbell. Is there a bit of a different strategy here? I'm not sure. Between those two Porsches, they seemed almost on the same part of the track when they came out of the pit lane after both of their first runs and potentially only run down the pit lane. Conor Philippe holding the flag for BMW Team RML, RML, RLL. Sorry, I was reading Johnny Morlam's tweets earlier on about Ray Mallet, my old boss at the Selena Seminar at the members meeting at Goodwood back in the UK earlier on today. RLL BMW M number 25. In fifth position, Ricky Taylor is another 2.2 seconds further back from Kaninka Minolta and the Acura with Tom Blomqvist uh, up his tailpipes in sixth. And then Philippe A for the second of the BMW M Hybrid V8s. That's the 24. 17 and a half seconds, as Jeremy mentioned, between the field, the remaining seven cars with Sebastian Bourdais for Cadillac putting himself into the wall early in the race, indeed heading down to turn one lap one. Uh, there'll be very few points garnered for the Cadillac 01 this weekend. In GTD, some pro cars that are leading at the moment. Ben Barnegat for Vassar Sullivan in the number 14 at the moment. Klaus Backler for Faf Motorsports, the plaid Porsche in second, the number nine of Jordan Taylor for the bright yellow Corvette in third position and in GTD Brian Sellers by eight tenths of a second from Roman De Angelis cracking scrap by two of the great teams in GTD Paul Miller Racing BMW number one and Roman De Angelis Hart of Racing Aston Martin the number 27 that's your VP Racing update with 42 let's call it 42 and a half minutes still to go on the streets of Long Beach under clear blue skies Jeremy Shaw and John Hindolf describing the action for you on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. And action of plenty, Jeremy, at the front of the field. People Durrani needs a pit stop. That's not stopping him hassling the leader at the moment. It's not, certainly. And uh, yeah, he's still going to go as fast as he possibly can. Uh, we, as you say now, we are uh, uh, inside 42, or just about 42 minutes to go in this race. There's still quite a long way to go. And they're going to have to uh, make another couple of time like they're going to have to pass all the GTD traffic as well. So, you know, it, it's, uh, it's not, there's no walk in the park here for anybody at this stage in the race. But brilliant strategy by that Petsky Porsche team to stay out longer than the other leaders uh, and to take full advantage. That's exactly what we talked about at the top of the show. It's a, a big gamble by the number 10 key team to come in early when they did. And I'm really surprised they did that. Uh, and it certainly has not worked in their favour no. at all. No. Uh, because uh, the, those extra laps on those hot tyres uh, paid huge dividends. Uh, first of all, for number 25 car, but also the two Porsches as well that came in uh, several laps later. It's just, just one lap later for number six car, but a huge difference in, in uh, where they ended up after the pit stop from before. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a really interesting race so far, that's for sure. Machi Jamane has the distraction of a piece of the interior bodywork flapping around inside the cockpit of the Porsche Penske Motorsport Porsche 963. There's uh, something that should be attached to the right-hand side of the cockpit, just under the windscreen, which clearly isn't. 
and depending on whether he's going left or right when he turns right of course it comes into the middle of the car when he turns left it goes back to the right hand side of that car and uh, as much as he'll be trying to tune that out it's a bit like when something catches your eye in an unfamiliar car like a, a, a one of the interior light switches that are glowing and, and catching the side window or something like that i find that really distracting so Matthew Jaminé having to tune that out at the moment at the front of the field and in a Nissan battle or an Inter Acura battle in their own Grand Prix here and very much their home Grand Prix Santa Clarita is where Honda Performance Development and the Acura uh, teams are based and what a facility that is with their uh, engine dynos and the uh, eight post rigs etc uh, and they are battling at the moment, Ricky Taylor and Tom Blomqvist for fifth and sixth. And Jeremy's um, exclamation was for how close they were both getting to the wall, but not as close as the Corvette and the Faf uh, Klaus Bach Backler uh, Porsche. And Jordan Taylor with a little bump and run going into turn six and some carbon fibre flying. Well, That's changed. And now he's up into second position in GTD Pro. Yeah. I mean Backler tried to squeeze down Taylor going to turn six there. He left him, you know, not really much option. He had, he had a little bit of an overlap, I think. So I think really at that point, it's up to Klaus Backler. If he wants to tighten that corner right down, that's his prerogative. But he's got somebody there who's challenging for position. So I don't, I would be surprised if there's any core made in race control about that one. I think Backler brought that among, uh, on himself by, uh, by being so ultra defensive there. And it hasn't paid off when he's lost that position. That is uh, second uh, position now in GTD Pro. Ben Barnett gets down the road after that brilliant first hit for uh, Jack Wilson. And in fact, they were able to go a lap longer than the Porsche was enabled to, to extend that lead at, uh, after the resumption following those pit stops. And uh, Barnett now, uh, the two pits there in classic style of a Lexus are out front comfortably. And indeed, race control have looked at that incident involving the Corvette number three and the FAF Porsche number nine. It has been reviewed by race control and it's it's good that we get that information from IMSA race control. No further action required, a deemed a racing incident. Yeah. Uh, looking I at the lap. That. Yeah, looking and look, at look, number 60 car is ahead of the number 10 car now. Yeah. Uh, and what's interesting to me, I'm just looking at their lap times. They're exactly. Doing, they're doing 12s now, which is still pretty quick. I mean, the, the fastest laps in the race are, are mid 11s. So, uh, interesting to see that Tom Blunkis, even though he hasn't yet uh, made a pit stop, so he's still on the same tyres with which he started the race, is able to make that pass on the number 10 car. However, of course, so far as Ricky Taylor's concerned at the wheel of the number six car, now in sixth position, he knows that Blunkis is going to, that car has just got past him, does still have to make a pit stop. So, there's not really much point in fighting too hard Correct. to keep him behind. Yeah, uh, lap. Uh, the lap from last year and I think the lap record for DPI a 110-317 Sebastian Bordet for Cadillac Cadillac have been uh, reigned supreme on the streets of Long Beach in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship if they're going to do it today it's going to have to be Pete Durrani now in the Whelan car with Bordet having gone out at going down to turn one lap one 110.317 is what I've got here, Jeremy. However, one yes. has to say that uh, an 11.6 at the moment uh, in the first year of the uh, new GTPs around the track here, uh, I'm, I'm actually really, uh, really encouraged by that because what the DPI's had six years of development to get to that kind of time, and the teams very much here still getting used to these cars and this is the third very different track that they've had this season in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. It is isn't it? completely different to each of the first two races with the uh, oval road course at Daytona then the, the bumpy runways at Sebring and now still bumpy but that's about the only similarity between uh, Sebring and Long Beach. The street circuit here is really uh, a, a tough challenge a different tough chap. He's trying 
Champs. That's why the Ipswich Wales Exports Car Championship is so cool because of the variety of racetracks. Uh, and this is a tremendous battle unfolding here before our eyes this afternoon. And uh, yeah, my hat's off there to uh, Matthew Jamine, who's put a little bit of space between himself and Pippa Durrani at this stage. Oh. And is it, is it, I mean, that's something to say, Jeremy. Anybody who can put time into Pippa Durrani at any time of an IMSA WeatherTech sports car race, they're doing something right, aren't they? Ah, <laughs> yes, they are indeed. <laughs> and, uh, he's certainly doing everything right. Uh, this afternoon, Matthew Jaminet, he's taken over that number six car from Nick Tandy after the first stint. Uh, the, you know, the two Porsches qualified in sixth and eighth positions. And here they are now, well, first and third, but number 31 car uh, still owes us a pit stop. Hello to everybody in the UK watching on via play. A new syndication for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship available on the Sky satellite platform. And uh, for those of you lazing back at just after 11 o'clock in the UK and watching that on your big screen, nice to have you with you. Does not affect the World Feed TV, which is still available. Uh, uh, in the UK and everywhere outside of the US that doesn't have a network TV uh, platform. And uh, so a choice of viewing, if you like, in the UK at the moment. Watch it on the stream or watch it on Viaplay. And on their extra platform at the moment, which is their free to air on the Sky the network, on the Sky platform, should I say, on satellite in the UK. And there will be plenty of people I know who are watching that at the moment. A number of people telling us how much they uh, enjoyed Sebring in full HG, HD on their big screens. Thanks to Viaplay for the syndication of, to IMSA and to Greenlight for putting that deal together. So still then, Mathieu Jaminé by all of a sudden 2.6 seconds, as Jeremy mentioned. Jaminé seems to have pulled the pin in that red and white stripe number six car. It's the uh, driver indicator light on the Porsche that's come loose in that car see it reflecting when it gets back to the right hand side of the cockpit and then through the right hand as it disappears again that really would be annoying me Jaminet having to ignore it as he's in behind the caught off AMG BMW coming in towards turn 5 and through it on the short straight down towards turn 6 still having to keep an eye behind for Pete Durrani who's second in the number 31 well, an engineering Cadillac, but made a very early stop that car and will have to come into the pit lane again before the end of the race, unless there's an inordinate amount of yellow towards the end of this race. And even uh, that might yeah. not be enough, to be honest, Jeremy, because he was in very, very early. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was in on, uh, on lap six. Uh, OK, the, those laps were under caution. Uh, but still, he's been he's out and been on track now for yeah probably around about 50 minutes or so. I would expect that car to come into pits the next two or three laps, uh, and then they'll be able to go to the end from there. And of course, he's going to be able to put on a, a fresh set of tyres, or at least a, a worse, a barely used set. They might have done one scrubbing lap during qualifying, but that's it at the most. Yes, exactly. So he'd be in good shape there. I'm just watching though the gap between second and third, which a couple laps ago was that. Well, four laps ago was three and a half seconds, then it was two and a half. It's now less than a second between Pippa Durrani and Matt Campbell in the second of the Porsches. Yeah, he's closing in, Jeremy, and I, I just wonder if people and, and is Taylor having is back to save a little Pilkes bit. Too. Sorry, say again, Jeremy. The Taylor is back ahead of too. We're up there on that last lap. Uh, John Bunkers in the number 60 car lost the position to the number 60. Uh, hello. Uh, excuse me, to number 10. Hello to Andrew Mather, who is in the UK, off to Wilt Mill for some karting tomorrow, asking about the GTP Porsche LED front lights blinking or flashing. Is that hybrid uses, similar to the red LED 
on the back of F1. I think that is just a frame rate on the, the video, actually. They do change colour when they come into the pit lane. Um, those four white lights, which of course are indicative and they follow the Porsche's uh, light signature on front of their, their street cars. But I, I do actually think that might just be a trick of the camera and the frame rate. Uh, that you are watching, Andrew, at the moment. Thank you on uh, at IMSA Radio at the pit moment. Stop for so that will be his final pit stop now. Now the question is, are they slinging a new set of tyres on that car? Have they got uh, another set of tyres? I, I can't say that we saw them change tyres when they came after six laps. And, and I, I yes, they are. So they're putting the, the second set of tyres on that car, which are lightly used Michelins, Jeremy. Yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, so yeah, he's going to have some pretty good tyres to go to the end of this. Week. The lap times are still pretty good. Last time around, for example, Colin Di Filippi in BMW car number 25 just had a 1 minute 12.0. The fastest anybody on that last lap. His best lap uh, uh, in that car was uh, a 1 minute uh, 11.8. So within two tenths of a second for Di Filippi uh, and he's what now into his stint uh, almost 20 laps I I think they might have only put left hand tyres on Durrani, uh, Durrani's car there I didn't see the right hand tyres that came off, now they may have already gone up the wall so I apologise for that because our look from the Global Broadcast Centre was uh, obscured and therefore I was relying on the screen and we'll wait to see on that but that's an interesting call well, it's only really relevant if there's a full course course correct John, because uh, he's going to come out well behind everybody else um, uh, Tom Bloke of course still has not yet made a pit stop at all no. so uh, he's going to fall he will fall behind Pipo uh, or, or, yeah he will fall behind yes. Pipo as well but uh, it's only it is relevancy if there's a full course caution they all pack up again you know, potentially fresher tyres to go to the end but as I said even after 20 laps Conor Di Filippi has turned some really really good laps in that BMW car number 25 and remember dear viewer and listener that the GTP cars at the front of the field had four sets of Michelin slick tyres for the whole weekend so that was two free practice sessions qualifying in the race however the stipulation was that two of only two of those sets could be using qualifying in the race so effectively they've had a set of two sets of tires for qualifying and the race everybody i think we saw jeremy using at least for a lap or two uh, two sets of tires in the qualifying yesterday so at least they were scrubbed in to take the sheen off the tyres, presumably wondering how hot it was going to be on track, and at 109 Fahrenheit still now, uh, that probably was a smart thing to do, or 43 degrees Celsius on the track here at Long Beach. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely perfect racing conditions right now, isn't it? Uh, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's not super hot, it's just nice and comfortably sunny. Beautiful. This is proper Southern California weather, which I can tell you, we haven't had this much on this year. It's been wet and cold and something that I remember from you know from many years ago now from me back in the UK oh, yeah. uh, but uh, we've got perfect conditions now and uh, yeah everybody is uh, is taking full advantage of it. there's a new best lap by the way by wow. Colin Filippi uh, it's not the fastest lap of the race but it is his, his best lap the third place car BMW for BMW uh, uh, for BMW won 11.785 for that third place car and he's uh, he's not too far behind the number seven car is only less than two seconds behind Maddie Campbell. That's for second and third positions. In fact, they were, both of them were closed up on Matthew Jaminet. Yeah, a 111.616, the best of the race by the number 60 uh, of Maya Shank racing the Acura. Uh, that car shown in the pits at the moment. Yes, it is. Yes. So you, yeah. see, Jeremy, see what you did. You mentioned they hadn't stopped, and immediately they had to go into yeah. the pit lane. Catherine Legg aboard the Gradient Racing Acura NSX across the line. Now the green and white number 66 GG Wentworth. Catherine having had a test 
uh, back in what many people would think was her natural environment, back in the open wheel uh, ranks with uh, IndyCar. Uh, a week or so ago, she will endeavour to qualify for the Indy 500 this year, and we are hearing that there will be 34 cars at least, so there will be a bump day for the Indy 500 uh, this year, and so uh, a little bit extra pressure just gone on to Catherine Legg's shoulders, having heard that, I'm sure, this weekend, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I did. That number 66 car, by the way, did change tyres before the start of the race. One or two uh, teams at, in GTD to change tyres before the race. The other one being number 77 car. And because they were bronze rated drivers that qualified the car, it was in, in uh, Catherine Dave's car, Sheena Monk, and number 77 was Alan Brindley also. Because they're bronze drivers for this year, there is no penalty. Other than moving to the back, they can still at least keep their points uh, for, from qualifying. Uh, and the reason for that was, you know, that because they nearly lost a position or two on the grid, but uh, it gives them a few more options during the race. Catherine was telling me this morning that she thought they could possibly change just two tyres to save themselves some time on their one pit stop. And it certainly worked out well for them because they started in the, in the 12th position uh, in the class uh, uh, at this race. Actually, be behind that word in where's my grid? She can't find it. Yeah, here we are. They started in the, uh, uh, you're at the very back of the field in the uh, 13th uh, position in the class, but they're now up inside the top 10 in ninth position. So that's worked out well for that gradient racing team number 66. That is a full season entry for Andrew Levens and Gradient Racing. They've effectively done a full season, but it took them two seasons to do it. The option in IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship to do a whole season, to do just the long races, or to yeah. do the short races. And they took two seasons, one doing the long races, one doing the short races. A point of note, actually, that this is a full point scoring round for the whole season uh, for GTD, which uh, it wasn't uh, last year, but it uh, is also a sprint race qualifier, one of the shorter races uh, this season, being one of uh, being the uh, shortest race of the season at just 100 minutes after we've come off a 24-hour and a 12-hour race at the Rolex 24 and the Mobile 112 as of Sebring. Good to see Gradient doing the full season here. Andres and the team being uh, long, long-time supporters of this series under various different guises and mm. uh, flying the Acura flag in the GT D category. Now, look at this battle for second place now, though, uh, with uh, Conor De Filippi really putting oh. the pressure, diving to the inside in turn six. He's not going to oh. make that. He's oh. not going to make that. And well done to Catherine Legg for staying out the way of that. Gets it down into first position. There's a beautiful flick turn, but will be cursing underneath the racing helmet as he comes out in front of his teammate, Philippe Eng and heads down to turn the race. That is literally one of those things where Matt Campbell left the door open, uh, plenty of re uh, racing room given there by both drivers, and Felipe dived down the inside and wasn't getting that one stopped. And Campbell, uh, with the presence of mind to give him some room, and Catherine Legg as well, as yeah. I said, that could, have, that could have ended up far worse than it did for everyone else. It's yeah. bad It's bad enough for Conor De Felipe who's dropped the position. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's exactly it. I hope uh, Klaus Backler has a look at that later on after this race, because if, he did, if he'd have done the same thing, he might well have not that lost that uh, second position in GTD Pro either, because he's now behind uh, Jordan Taylor having tried to squeeze him down there. So, yeah, great racing there by those two. And you're right, it's cost Conor De Felipe just won that just one position, but he's about 10 seconds now behind Ricky Taylor, so it's going to be hard to make up, but clearly he's got a fast car. Let's drop into GTD Pro. Ben, Parnic ben Barnicat leads for Vassar Sullivan after a great first stint in the number 14 Lexus RCF GT. The new car has already been spotted at testing in Japan. We don't know what to call it because it hasn't been given a name yet. Uh, we don't know what the specification is, but we have seen some silhouettes of the car in camouflage at Fuji, at uh, Toyota's uh, track and foot of Fuji. 
So he's up the road by 6.2 seconds. And then Jordan Taylor and Klaus Backler are battling for second place. They're going down to turn nine at the end of Seaside at the moment. Jordan Taylor uh, currently in the bright yellow Corvette in second place in GTD Pro, ninth overall with Faf Motorsports, Klaus Backler on the streets of Long Beach for the first time. And you would have lost money, wouldn't you? Uh, on that one, but he's not done a full season here in the US before. All of his previous seasons have been in into competition have been uh, just at the Rolex 24. Nice wow. week. Oh, very close to the wall there by both of the BMWs. And a moment or two ago, that's it. Very audacious and uh, perhaps slightly ambitious lunch down the inside by Conor yeah. de Filippi used the uh, let, used the Acura perhaps but uh, Matt Campbell just sticking on his racing line and holds on to second position just a quick note while we're saying hello to people around the world also to everyone on Twitter and everyone on the Discord group as well where there's uh, plenty uh, of, uh, of chat and debate going on. The responsible adults on there uh, as well. Well, she's everywhere, of course, as she is uh, omnipotent. Uh, and with under, all of a sudden, Jeremy, we're under 20 minutes to go. Yeah, yeah, and we've got a race on our hands here. Ricky Taylor is caught up to Maddie Campbell. We're on board with Ricky Taylor. That uh, is a Porsche well, right ahead of him now. Is he going to make a move into turn six? No. Uh, Campbell oh. defends the inside line, but... He's not getting that stopped either, is he? That's going to be the over and under. And Campbell... Matt, Ca Matt Campbell is getting used to that move, isn't he? All right, you want to have a go down the inside as we turn left on the pine. Give it a go. Go on, I dare you. Yes, thank you very much. I'll just stay to the outside and come back. Number seven with the... Uh, black stripes on that car goes through <laughs> back into second position hello to yeah but is it a matter of time though and i tell you what the other bmw Conor Felipe, he's just set the fastest lap of the race a couple of yes, laps ago now 11.503 Conor Felipe, car number 25 so he's about nine seconds behind ricky taylor this might be uh, time not enough time to make that up again but uh, this is a super battle for second place and you know, the, the race leader, Matthew Jammer, is only a couple of seconds or so ahead of these two. Yes, and Pavel Dominic will be watching with interest in Poland on via play at the moment. About a second, just over a second away from a lap record for the top class of prototypes. The Bordier Cadillac in 2022 did a 10 3 side by side again for second place and again Matt Campbell is very confident Jeremy he's not massively defending here he's basically saying if you can now break me have a go caught up behind the corner of oh there's a touch between the two cars battling for second the number 10 Acura and the Porsche 963 and it's taken off part of the bodywork on the left rear of Matty Campbell's car I was about to see he's not feeling the need to defend saying if you want to out break me you try it but Ricky Taylor ran into the back of him there as they were coming around the court of AMG number 32 on at Seaside there last time around. Now, is that going to affect the aerodynamics of the back of that 963 Porsche Penske Motorsport? For a moment, going down into turn one, it looks OK, but the, it is missing some bodywork now. And where did that debris go on Seaside Way? That's the question that I want to know. As Taylor looks down the inside at turn four, uh, that's not a passing place. Now, three or five. I'm just seeing, Jeremy, the amount of races we've watched here. How many passes have you seen at turn four? And <laughs> that haven't ended here. Yes, indeed. That haven't ended in shards of carbon fibre and bin liners. Yes, exactly right. Uh, back down to the scene of the crime last time around. So, where was that debris, debris deposited? The leader is just ahead of them. I think it's clear it's certainly not sitting on the racing line. So we've dodged a bullet there with 16 and a half minutes to go. And we are racing with the top three set, set, separated by just 4.3 seconds. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And uh, and that's two Porsches, an Acura and a BMW as well. The Cadillac, of course, not part of it. Uh, with the, the number 31 car at the tail end of the lead lap. By the way, after 
it's uh, late pit stop. Polo Brown is now a full, is back again, a full lap behind the leaders in GTP, so in seventh place on his own. Oh, right to the wall by the second place car of Matthew Jamini. I've just noticed, by the way, that the I think he's that uh, clip on the left rear has also disabled the rear lights on the wing end plate of that Porsche. It's getting very loose indeed. They're side by side on the short shoot between five and six. But Campbell has the inside this time and will usher the blue and black Acura out of the racing line and does so. But that's clean. That's fine. Racing room asked for and given. But there does seem to be a little bit of a lack of grip now from Matt Campbell in second place as he's struggling. It's not just about coming out of the corners, Jeremy. It's about getting in there, that portion. Now, is this aerodynamics from the bit of the bodywork and the uh, rear diffuser that's been knocked off in that incident? Is it tyre wear on the Michelin tyres? Not sure, can't answer that question. But that number seven car does not look as planted as it did earlier in the race. Yeah, I mean, all the uh, leaders now are turning laps in the, in the high 12s. Uh, they've all lapped in the, well, mid 11s, mid to high 11s. Incredibly close, actually. All the fastest laps between each of the cars are all within uh, three and a half tenths of a second, which is fairly remarkable. Uh, four different manufacturers and uh, seven different cars. Uh, but, Campbell uh, struggling so again, Jeremy, yeah. to and get off six, turn again, five. He's defensive at six yeah stays in the middle of the road but didn't move i've got no problem no, no with problem. that that's absolutely fine picked a line and stuck to it jeremy that's all right yeah. isn't it oh yes absolutely right good clean hard racing between those two jamini has figured out where that is turn six here so he's going to make sure that uh, there's no way through on the inside there for vicky taylor but vicky taylor yeah he's won this race three times in the past uh, He's won it twice as well. So five wins between the two of them in the last what seven or eight years. So they've had a tremendous run of success. So Jordan Taylor won, and Ricky, the two brothers, won in 1916 and 17, and Philip Albuquerque won in 1918 and 19. So they know how to win here, those two. We've got a short episode of Michelin Post Race Tech hashtag Michelin PRT got some Porsche racing to come with the Porsche Deluxe at Carrera Cup North America live in sound and vision when you're in the US or further afield to come after this to round off a very busy Super Saturday and once again we're in the same area damage to the left rear of Matt Campbell's car and again round the outside at turn six that's not going to work Campbell parking his car in the middle of the road like a motocross block pass except it's a block defend and again, that's brilliant. Oh, the problem. Problem for Ricky Taylor, he's hit the wall. Now, has he punctured a tire? There was definitely some debris oh, that came. behind him. And here comes the BMW of Conor de Felipe. So a sigh of relief from Matt Campbell. It was turn eight. And I think Campbell clipped the inside of turn eight. There was certainly some debris, maybe a bit of the advertising on the wall that came off. Now, is there damage to that number 10 Cunningham and all the Acura but all of a sudden Campbell has gone and is a second and a half to the good and Conor de Felipe begins to pressure for a step on the podium well how things could change so quickly our Porsche keys to race small mistakes big consequences here Jeremy and now the battle in the top three that was for second place is now for third position in fact they're closing back in on Matt Campbell I don't think that Campbell's car has got the pace it had earlier on that's a big piece of bodywork that's missing from the left rear after the Acura ran into it and all of a sudden Conor de Felipe smells a podium here for BMW yeah, second, second podium because they got the Hamlet at Sebring as well didn't they yeah. so it's been a really good it, 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 to, to Daytona, the first race of the season, the BMW team struck. And here, particularly, fastest lap of the race, that's a big feather in the cap for Donald wow. Felipe, who's originally, of course, from San Clemente, only, what, 45 minutes or so, depending on the traffic, uh, from here at Long Beach. 
And Catherine Legg has just put in the fastest lap of GTD's race with a 1.18.7. Whilst this is going on in eighth position now in GTD. She's gone past Turner Motorsports' Robbie Foley, so that's another position made up by the green and white Acura. By the way, very quickly, the 25 BMW of uh, Conor de Filippi had a little bit of a whoopsie in turn six. We saw that earlier on. However, more important than that, um, about 10 minutes ago, it was a pit lane speeding violation for the number 60 of Colin Brown, and that's why now oh. he's off the lead lap. Down no, the it's not it's... why he's off the lead lap, it's why he's almost two laps down. Well, yes, indeed. It. Excuse me. Now, the battle for... Let's get back the battle for second on Seaside. Three cars. Here comes the BMW of Conor de Filippi round the outside into turn nine, and they touch. And somehow... Ricky Taylor and Conor De Filippi get through. And Matt Campbell's going, you guys fight. Listen, the more you guys are fighting, the more I don't have to fight you off. I'm just wondering if the number 10 took tyres at the pit stop and whether that is an issue at the moment. And by the way, Philippe A is not that far away now. We might have a four-car battle in the last 10 minutes here, Jeremy, for the last two spots on the podium. Great stuff. Tremendous race this is uh, developing into. Now, Matthew Germany has got a pretty handy lead. It's around about five seconds all of a sudden over his teammate Maddie Campbell, but behind him, boy, as they're working their way oh. through the GTD cars one more time. Matty Campbell, very good through traffic, but he's struggling for rear grip on that number seven Porsche. Down into turn number six again with the blue and black Acura behind. He's in the middle of the road, down the inside of turn eight. That's a huge move. What a brilliant pass from Ricky Taylor. Pass of the season so far. And Catherine Legs off the course as well at turn nine. And the BMW has gone through as well. So Matt Campbell from second down to fourth. And that was all from Ricky Taylor's late dive to the right hand side down at the bottom of Pine as they turn right on the seaside way. An audacious but clean manoeuvre. If there's a Ford for pass of the season, you might as well stop. No calls. Don't bother tweeting now because that has got to be up there. That was outstanding, Jeremy. And clean as a whistle by both of those drivers. Conor de Filippi taking advantage as well as he is now up in the third position. That was a brilliant decisive pass there from Ricky Taylor. I mean, he, he, just, he knew what he wanted to do and he just committed to it, stuck it down the inside. There was no way that uh, that Maddie Campbell could even turn into the corner yep. at that point. Uh, and so the pass was made brilliant by, by Ricky Taylor. And of Felipe, the other beneficiary there as well. But now, uh, Maddie Campbell, having been running in second place, he's, he's under pressure now from Philip Haig as well in that second place. Yeah, this is going to get uh, hot and heavy before the end of the race. Let's check back in with the GTD Pro Battle. Still two seconds between Ben Barnacourt and Jordan Taylor, but Klaus Backler is still right there. So that gap's come down between first, second and third. Still a handy lead for Ben with seven and a half minutes still to go. Yeah, I mean, what was that? Six and a bit seconds did I have to say before? Yeah, it's over eight. It was over eight. Is that, yeah, it was over eight. There you go. It's actually over ten. seconds. Yeah. So this uh, battle is pushing on. I wonder if Ben Barnico in the Lexus did change tyres, or in order to get some uh, track position, there's been a big lot of down a turn one, a lot of Michelin smoke hanging in the air there, as. Jordan Taylor is in behind the number 79. Shields Gunon driven WeatherTech. That car's not been on the pace all weekend, sitting down in 21st position. And what, uh, 14th in GT, 5th in GTD Pro. Just hasn't had the pace this weekend. But at the moment, is holding up the battle for second. A little bit further ahead is the that's the fault racing car isn't it a little bit further ahead yeah uh, and talking talking the mercedes john after sebring there have been some bounce performance changes also in gt uh, d the mercedes uh, lost some uh, some horsepower uh, approximately almost 10 kilowatts of, of power 
uh, and uh, that has uh, certainly not been to their advantage at all. The Yakka is a little bit heavier than it was at Sebring, but uh, has uh, and also gained a little bit of power, as has the Lamborghini and the McLaren. But as those changes have certainly not been detrimental, at least on this street course, for Mercedes. A couple of points coming in from the Twitterverse. At IMSA Radio, James Cooper said, did Ricky Taylor not cut the track to make that pass? A turn in, all four Michelin tyres over the inside kerb. We've seen a lot of that this week. It's not been penalised, uh, James. So we'll leave that one to race control. And Ian McCarthy has saved the item sliding around inside the number six Porsche. He's obviously been watching on the... Uh, on board, which you can see at uh, insert.com. So it's the set of safety lights for the hybrid system currently showing green, so it's safe to touch the car. And you can see that on either side of the uh, hybrid cars. Thank you for that, Ian. I could see it moving around. And it from that portion at the start of five since the pit stops actually uh, and continues r and Lits for Lexus in third position now Jeremy and I you and I need to work out in the next uh, three minutes or there about the BDO Nose Strategy Award uh, for uh, this race it certainly hasn't worked out for wheel and engineering um, perhaps it did work out for Ricky Taylor and the Cunningham and Olga Angera, they took an early-ish pit stop and they're now chasing down the leader at three and a half seconds. Yeah, but uh, no, that, I mean, they lost a lot of ground by making that early stop, so it certainly hasn't uh, played out in their favour. Yes, he's able to, to get that, uh, some positions back, but no, I don't, think that was a, uh, I don't think that was the right move by that team at that stage in the race. I would say uh, the car that's leading the race that was running in second place before that round of pit stops came out ahead well ahead of the window. I'm just surprised by how much uh, faster that pit stop was for the, for the Porsche. I think there must have been some sort of miscue in the pits for the number 10 car as well because it lost a lot of ground to all those other cars around him. Right with the leader now as they come uh, on to Shoreline across the line. The gaps come right down to six tenths of a second between Chamonix and Taylor. The Porsche seemingly using their rear tyres. I'll put in for an honourable mention before we make the BDO Nose Strategy Awards. Gradient Racing, who, as you mentioned, Jeremy, made up a couple of three places there. Having a cracking scrap at the moment with Turner Motorsport. They were in the eighth place at one, uh, one stage, but Catherine went straight on at turn nine, uh, and that threw them a bit of a curveball. But now, with two minutes to go, a battle for the lead at the front of the field. Maybe that strategy has paid off then for Conningham and Alter. Yeah, a really slow lap there. 15, 15 five for, for the uh, race. Taylor, it's right there. He closed up three seconds on that last lap. Let's see why? Porsche then. So it won't be like it won't be white flag this time. Next John. time, It'll be yeah. white flag next time. So, totally agree. Uh, yeah, In two more laps. I think Porsche are running out of rear tyres here. I really do. Coming on to shoreline to start the penultimate lap. It's going to be a defensive drive by Matthew Jaminet for the next four miles or thereabouts. 
it'll be white flag next time around down the inside into turn one another audacious maneuver but oh no i don't believe it ringy taylor's put it in the wall at turn one and that's game over that will be a safety car and porsche will end up first and third ringy taylor throws away a top three potential no an actual top three and possibly a win and here's then philippe albuquerque's work has gone for nothing it's going to be back-to-back -back podiums for Conor de Filippi in fact can Conor de Filippi close down before the full course caution is called very close to the wall coming out of eight from Chamonix he's got about two seconds on second place and Ricky Taylor is in the tyres at turn one full course yellow it's all over on the streets there'll be white flag next time round and Porsche will be first and third with BMW, with another BMW uh, podium finish. Oh my goodness me. What a finish. Well, one tremendously decisive, as Jeremy said, an audacious manoeuvre at turn six, but Ricky Taylor overcooked it into turn one. And... The championship leaders will end up in the wall. It's two Porsche Penske Motorsport 963s on the podium with a BMW, the meat in their sandwich. Porsche first and third, BMW second and fourth. Oh, my goodness me, Jeremy. Well, I suppose with a, a lap and a half or two laps to go, it was worth a try, but head in hands from Ricky Taylor in the tyres at turn one. He's fine, he's just yeah. disappointed. Oh yeah, he's crushed and uh, of course he's got to answer to his, to his team owner here. Oh yes, that's dad. That's a tough uh, Sunday lunch tomorrow, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is, it oh, is, it is. so it was a... close to getting that done, Jeremy. So <laughs> close to getting that done. I, I actually thought he'd done it, to be honest. He comes out late to the left-hand nah, side. he was too fast, wasn't he, ah. yeah. Yeah, just, uh, oh, oh man. Oh, my goodness. Uh, How close was Conor de Filippi, by the way, to yeah. ploughing into the back of him? Yeah, what a brilliant drive it's been by Conor de Filippi uh, in that number 25 car and Nick Yellowly. Nick Yellowly, first time here. Uh, and uh, he was telling me yesterday morning how much he loves the racetrack. Uh, and uh, ooh, there's a replay from onboard Ricky Tully. Yeah, just, just straightforward and simple there. Just too much, too optimistic he was there at turn one. But what a shame after that brilliant move he did just a few laps ago to get into uh, that uh, second position. Ah. Right, Jeremy. Um, who are we going to give the BDO Nose Strategy Award to? I think it's got to go to to Porsche Penske Motorsport yeah. and the win, haven't it? They, they used the first part of the race uh, correctly and they'll come through to take the chequered flag. Yeah, I mean, you know, their, their pit stop, uh, for some reason, was massively faster than everybody else's. Massively more, uh, which is curious. Um, you know, before the pit stops, well, the three leaders were pretty much nose to tail, number 10, 6 and 25. Uh, once the, uh, the stops had been completed, number six car was way ahead of everybody um i mean he was four five six seven about nine seconds at number 25 car and the number 10 car was another three seconds back so i'm just perplexed as to how <laughs> that uh, that pit stop was so much faster uh, but i love the strategy also by the number 25 team uh, for a BMW yes. M hybrid v8 team i mean that was a great call by them as well and a brilliant run i mean the car wasn't on the pace at Daytona and what a good job they have done to get that car to be competitive again and you know almost at two podiums this time second and fourth that'll be a great day for Bobby Ray Hall's team so who are we giving the BDO no strategy award to to the the Porsche Penske team or to BMW RLL well look I always like to give it to somebody that doesn't win the race overall All right. but it was a but it was a brilliant it was a great strategy call and, but I'm just yeah again yeah no it's, you've got to go to number six guys okay. hasn't it but uh, there but, you go but I still want to find out how that pit stop was so much faster than everybody else. <laughs> um, you could possibly have asked Roger Penske that, except he's in Portugal uh, uh, this <laughs> weekend overseeing the FIA uh, WEC, and we'll have that race for you uh, tomorrow across the Radio Show Limited network of uh, channels. So a uh, Porsche Penske Motorsport win in the 963 from the BMW in second. Uh, and the second of the Porsches in third position. 
BMW and Porsche divvying up the top four between them. People to Rani with a bizarre strategy there for wheel and engineering. Interesting to hear post race uh, what went on there. The 31 must car have been a, must have been a problem, wasn't it? Has to have been a problem. A minute yeah. off the lead at the end, which is the extra pit stop, isn't it? Let's be quite clear uh, about that. They were twice down the pit lane to everybody else's at uh, once. Uh, Ricky Taylor will finish seventh behind the number 60 Acura. So that is going to have implications for the championship points standings for the leaders coming in here. In GTD Pro, it was Vassar Sullivan, number 14, Lexus. What a great battle between Corvette and Faf Motorsport for second and third. Lexus, Corvette, Porsche, BMW, Aston Martin, your top five in GT. The second two, BMW with Brian Sellers and Paul Miller Racing. Winners again, back-to-back -back victories in GTD for Brian wow. Sellers and Madison Snow. And credit Brian for that, by the way. Coming out the pits on cold air tyres than Roman De Angelis. A very hard but fair fight with the young Canadian for Hart Racing Team. He'll finish second. And Aaron Tealitz will finish third for Vassar Sullivan in GTD. Sum that one up, Jeremy Shaw, as the <laughs> Porsche 963 heads to victory lane. Yeah, just a great race. It really was really exciting. Uh, tremendous drive by this Porsche team. Jonathan Duguid is the uh, the team principal these days, uh, and he's done a fantastic job to pull this all together. That was a... Uh, yeah, he had to work pretty hard towards the end of Matthew Jaminet, but for here, Nick Tandy, who's also a previous winner here on the streets, of course, is Nick. Uh, in uh, WeatherTech competition back in the GTLM days in 2016. He came on top also in 2021 for Corvette as well. So he's won on the streets here for three different manufacturers, has Nick Tandy. Mm, that takes some doing as well. Uh, Post Race Tech, hashtag Michelin PRT. Coming up next, we'll have the current point standings. We'll have a bit of chats. You decide our agenda uh, at IMSA Radio, hashtag PRT. It'll be a short one because we have to uh, turn things around and get into our Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup race one of the weekend. Mathieu Jaminet disrobes inside the car, takes a deep breath, puts his Porsche Penske Motorsport hat on. Make sure you get the tag Hoyer watch on as well, uh, handed to him by the team member. Oh, hang on, Porsche Penske hat uh, swapped out for Michelin podium hat, which has a big number one on it. Yeah, that one will do very nicely. And Jeremy, the stranglehold of Cadillac is broken on the streets of Long Beach by Porsche and by Porsche Penske Motorsport. Yeah, wow, what a great job the Acura engineers have done over the winter. That car's been uh, fast all winter for Acura, but they're not going to win this race here, Porsche. That was a tremendous effort by them. They didn't have the fastest car bats, but it's just so tight. I mean, look at the best lap times for each of the manufacturers. Actually, the winning car had the slowest, fastest lap of anybody in in DP, in the GP, GTP that in this race. That happens, though, but doesn't it? it? That yes, it happens. Does. But and when people shout and scream <laughs> about uh, a BOP, I often point to that, Jeremy, and, and you know, they weren't the fastest car, but they still won the race, and that's why they've got the BDO Nose Strategy Award. All right, we'll take a breath. We'll hand the PA over uh, to the uh, formalities down in Victory Circle. Jeremy and I back in a couple of minutes' time with Michelin Post Race Tech from Long Beach. The chequered flag ends the race, but it's only the start of the conversation. Michelin Post Race Tech on imsaradio.com. Have your say. Ask the experts. Make your point. Michelin Post Race Tech. The end of the race is only the beginning.